Welcome everyone. Today their example is going to be solving a problem using equivalent ratios. Be sure you have a piece of scratch paper to take notes and try to watch the video a couple of times. Follow along if you want and make sure you have any questions written down for class tomorrow. Let's take a look at a way we can solve a problem using equivalent ratios. In this example, we're going to find the original ratio and find an equivalent ratio based on the other information in the problem. The morning announcement said that two out of every seven sixth grade students in the school have an overdue library book. Jasmine said, that would mean 24 of us have overdue books. Grace argued, no way. That is way too high. How can you determine who is right? If we want to find out whether Jasmine is right or Grace is right, we need to see if we can come up with an equivalent ratio to the ratio given in the morning announcements. The morning announcements said that two out of every seven sixth grade students, two out of every seven, that's a key phrase for what we're dealing with ratios. Two out of seven. One of the tricks is to figure out what the two represents and what the seven represents. If we read that sentence again, the morning announcement said that two out of every seven sixth grade students in the school have an overdue library book. The two goes with the number of students with overdue library books. It's the number of students with overdue books. The seven out of every seven. That means if we took the total number of sixth graders and broke them into groups of seven, two out of every seven would have overdue library books. So the seven is the total number of sixth grade students. It would look like this if we drew a picture. Here are seven sixth grade students. Of this group of seven students, two have overdue library books. Five do not have overdue library books. So two with overdue books. Five without overdue books. And seven total students. Now that we know what this ratio is telling us, we can use it to see if Jasmine is right. We know that the ratio is 2 to 7. Jasmine said that would mean 24 of us have overdue books. Would the 24 go with the 2 or with the 7? That's right, since Jasmine was talking about 24 have overdue books, we would put the 24 in the same side as the 2. So now we need to figure out what number would go with the 7. If we assume Jasmine is right, we can use equivalent ratios to find this number. What number do we need to multiply 2 by to get 24? That's right, we need to multiply it by 12. If these two ratios are equivalent, then we need to multiply the 7 by 12 as, all, as well. Seven times 12 is 84. 
Now we can see who is right. If there are 84 students in the sixth grade, then Jasmine is right. But if there are not 84 students in the sixth grade, then Grace would be right. Either way, we've used equivalent ratios to find out our missing piece of information. We can always look at equivalent ratios like equivalent fractions. If we turn our ratio into a fraction, we know we can multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same value to get an equivalent fraction. Ratios and fractions are very closely linked. Well, there we go. That's how you solve a problem using equivalent ratios. The most important part of the problem was to know what words went with each part of the ratio. We needed to know what the 2 meant and what the 7 meant. If we knew that, then we could figure out where the 24 went. Whenever you solve a problem using equivalent ratios, or any ratios for that matter, it's important to label your information so that you know what your numbers mean and you know what your answer means. Now that we've solved the problem and we know how to label our information, be sure you follow up with your homework tonight. We'll talk about this some more in class and do some more practice problems. Have a good night.